It is 6.02 p.m. on Tuesday, August 13th, 2024, and I'm calling the wait meeting of the Waitley Select Board to order. Uh, item number one on the agenda is to review and vote to approve the meeting minutes from July 30th, 2024. Is there any discussion? No comments. Hey, no, comments, no, no, questions. Second. To approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Roll call. Uh, next, we typically review and discuss vendor and payroll warrants, but those are not available at this time, so we will take them up at next meeting. Uh, yeah. yeah, our accountant is on vacation, having a good time. Uh, public comment. Do we have any public folks? Yeah, no, nobody by Zoom who would like to provide comment on anything. Um, appointments. Uh, ahead of 6.10 p.m., we have a public hearing to consider a petition submitted by Eversource for the placement of a utility pole on Straits Road at the intersection with River Road. I open that hearing, and Eversource, are you available and ready to speak to us? Hi, uh, yeah, I'm here online. So what we would like is to hear your request uh, for the placement of the utility pole. The board will discuss it and ask you any questions if necessary. If there are members of the public who have questions, they will pipe in and uh, the, we will close the hearing and the select board will discuss and make a Hi, yeah, so we're, we've been having some um, load growth in Whaley, so we're planning to add this pole in, kind of in the middle between two existing poles, just so that we can use that for this load growth for our capacity. So we're, you know, building on our existing structures and we would need an extra pole to do that. So we're just adding it right between the two poles that exist on Straits Road. I actually think the two, one pole is on Straits Road and the other is on, I think that's Main Road. And is there a map included or there is. description? I see the description. It's after the, uh, after that one, you put there. Oh, got it. Thank glass you. And it folds out. Look at that. It's Beautiful. Look at that. This is and I'm sorry, would you state your name again? Yep. My name is Desiree Dodge. Hey. Hi, Desiree. Thanks for being oh. here. Ruby, would it be okay to ask them to use their camera so they can be at least... If yeah, not that's famous, right. Can we see your face? You absolutely can. Give me one second. Yep. Hopefully I can get this to work. Hi, everyone. Hi. 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 All righty. Right. So I also have the map in front of me as well. Terrific. So you sent out notices to abutters for the hearing. Have you? We don't see anybody here in in the public who has. Do we know Brian is here? Is Brian? An ah. Oh, Brian. I don't know Brian's last name, but Brian via Zoom. Are you here for the EverSource meeting? Okay. Okay. Maybe not. Okay. Right. Any questions or comments from the board? Um. Usually we bring up the the double poles. Um. And, yeah, uh, I did talk to someone about that. So this is a job um that was submitted by uh one of our. Uh, project specialist Michael Santos, but he's not here. Um, so I'm filling in from him. So they did give me a background story on those double poles. Um, I believe that there was 47 of them that you guys were concerned with. And I think we did remove 41 of them already. Yeah, um, there's still a lot. Yeah, there's still, um, there's still a good number. Um, and a member of the, of our town um, said there's, um, at least a couple that have been here well over a year. There's two um, just west of the bridge on Christian Lane that's just been taken down to one lane, I'm told. Yep. Um, and then there's one, uh, what's called a leaner somehow, uh, uh -huh. that was on Long Plain Road, um, south of the elementary school, about a half a mile. So those are three oh. 
that I know about that I am told have been here for more than a year. I don't have documentation to give you, but I've got no reason to think that the, or the you know, the citizen supplying information is, is making that up. Um, Keith is here. Keith may, uh, or Highway is more than that. There's far more than those three, but those three at least have been there more than a year. If yeah, I did we get a list of those ones? Because the, again, I got this from somebody else because there was some talk about it maybe a little while back between you and projects that there was 47 that were listed. Um, so I don't know if those three that you're talking were on that list or if these are outside of the, those ones that were provided to us. Um, it might be good. I mean, we, we've... Um, got a new town administrator since last time we had a poll hearing. So this is, yeah. this, um, this is Pete's first poll hearing. So we have to get properly <laughs> yeah. uh, oriented. Yeah, no, we want to address those polls too, because they are, you know, a hazard for us if they're leaning over. Um, and I know that they are making the efforts to right. um, get those taken care of for you guys. Um, so as they far as I know, we are, go ahead. Uh, you say there was a list of 47 and you re removed 41, Keith, would you say there were more than six remaining? Yes. Okay, so that the 47 right. is not a comprehensive account. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Could, we, could we possibly get from you yes, I could. that I list, could another list plus the ones on the list that you think have been taken care of and the ones you think have not been taken care of? All right, because it, it's it's uh, that it's often you know we we just keep submitting the same thing, but somewhere on on your list it's been checked up, it's done, it's not actually done. I mean, I could see where that kind of an error could could, could slip in. Um, yeah. Let me clarify um, the place where you would like to submit the new poll. Is there an existing poll, and we are ending up with another poll, or are you Joyce requesting that prior to us approving this, you'd like other polls removed? Well, or is that would be in the discussion of the select board yeah. to whether to hold up this one until some more of the polls get taken care of. I think a reasonable point to that is if any of the six that Desiree believes is on the remaining list are within the vicinity of this request. Because if mm -hmm. the request is to do this poll, but there are still double polls there, they should Remove mitigate those. the double poll at the same time. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, Keith, do you have any yeah. questions or concerns? I mean, it, some of them are definitely are. I'm going to say three, three plus years on a few of them that they've been yeah in limbo waiting for things to be transferred. Are the comments players still on it? Comments? Oh yeah, that's the oh. biggest. You know, and this is the always the problem. In many cases, Eversource is, the, is usually the most responsive to the work that needs to be done. Right. So we can't remove any of the ones that communications are still on just because we can't touch their facilities. So I I don't know if this the list is longer than 47 and 47 is the number that we are completely ready to transfer over and maybe the uh, ones that are still in place are waiting on like Verizon or um, some kind of uh, communications like a cable or something like that. I, I think I heard you say transfer over. 41 are ready to transfer over, so they're not taken down? No, I'm saying I don't know if the 47 that we have on the list, 41 of them are done. I don't know if that number of 47 are ones that we could have worked on because let's say the number was 60, but only 47 we could have moved over because there may be communications, like he had said, um, on those ones and those ones we can't. Um, move anything over until Verizon or if it's cable TV is still on them. I think we need to get lists from both B yeah. and from Eversource. And well, yeah, we need to check the list because if we're looking at two different lists, then there's no there's no sense in that. Yeah. Do we know who um, that was originally submitted to the ones that were um, had issues with you guys who went, who um, from Eversource it was given to? You have to go back in your, in the, you know, the last time we 
Like right. Well, you can pull that in a search on yeah. your computer. Whatever. Yeah, I think it was an action item for Brian. Brian would have um, and he would have probably kept a record somewhere of who we sent it to. So we'd have to probably look that up. Oh. Okay. It looks like it was. Yeah. yeah, he's trying to find it in real time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I just want to make sure that, because um, I know that we are actively working on them right now from whoever the list was given to. Um, and I want to let them know. The six that, that are left, I believe they're still obviously going to do those ones. And then if there's anything outside of that on the list, I'm wondering if communications is still on them. And that's why we can't move everything over. How's it going in real time? Um, well, I did find an email, but this was between Brian and Natalie Weiss, um, oh, okay. yep. which actually acknowledges that there were 60, over 60, but 14. So that kind of gets us to this 47, 47. that 14 yep. had Verizon communications, which was why they were not on the list. Right. Okay. So it must have been 61. <laughs> Right. And we do right. have just here the other 14 that are outside of it because they were Verizon. And unfortunately, it's only a street name, not a uh, whole number. Oh. Mm -hmm. So those ones, so I think the, the 47, which we've done 41 out of them, we have six left that we're still actively going to be replacing. Um, those remaining 14, we need Verizon to do some work because without them, we're not, unfortunately, we're not able to touch their plant. So, um, yeah, I think, like I said, there's six left that we're working on currently. So those should be. Are you all in touch with Verizon? Like every day saying, hey, Verizon. No. Yo, yeah, 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 yeah. We, um, our process is we're supposed to be reaching out to them, which we have to get them to do stuff. This would have been prior. So, that double wood that you're seeing um, is something that they're already seeing from us, the request to change it. Um, as far as making them do it, um, they're a whole different entity. They, you know, <laughs> they, yeah. But you see how much they listen to us. Right, right. right. Um, it's it's kind of like, unfortunately, as far as we go, like making the request, um, seeing where they're at with it, they kind of give us similar answers as they would to the general public as well. That's how they kind of treat us in this thing. I mean, we can reach back out to them, and I'm sure that when this list came in, we probably already have. Um, but yeah. where they're at with it, that I don't know. They might need a reminder, though. Yeah, yeah they, we can send a reminder. These other six, and um, and we keep getting they they've got this real. Biatch on the board of selectmen there, who just <laughs> gets on our case all the time about these polls that you guys yeah, aren't yeah. Going to step on. Yeah. yeah. So those should be done. If we have six left, I wouldn't imagine it would take very long to finish those ones. I don't know when that list. Do you have the date there with you? Um, that that was sent out that list. It was in twenty twenty three, but that's not the list. That was just a back and forth with our state rep. Um, okay. yeah, it's not, you know, like formal I'm just trying to see a time frame for us of how, how fast we completed um, At least the a, year ago, a year ago or so, we, I think, denied the poll just because yeah. we were yeah. so yeah. fed up with not getting any action on the double polls. Right, right. Yep. So, so I think... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I was just saying, I think for us, what what we can do is just the six left and then the reminder to Verizon to see where they are at with that as well for the remaining 14. And then once they transfer everything over, then we can go back out and complete those. So the six that are left are your responsibility that solely any communication is off of them. And that's, from my under, that's from my understanding. Because they gave me confirmation today that there was 47 that we could do, and we did 41 already. Oh. Oh. Oh, this was... I... Oh. Yes. Okay. Jesse Martin. This was back in 2000, June of 2022. Okay. Jesse 
um, was the one that was working with our previous town administrator that had put together the list, the Waitley double pull report. Um, okay. I don't know if that helps. I can. Yeah, always... Jesse Martin, he still works in the department. Oh, great. Okay. Yep. Jesse Martin works at Everstore. Everstore. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there were other email back and forth on the Verizon thing because I guess the Verizon one is more problematic to yep. Kate's point. Yeah. Of yeah. Ever starts with more responsive. Mm -hmm. All right. Do we need to gather any more information to close the hearing and discuss and make a determination? I'm satisfied. Uh, I'm good. Too. All right. I'll close the public hearing portion. Uh, the Select board will now discuss and determine what to do. Is there a I, motion? I, 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 I have no problem with this particular poll. The question is how it fits in with the double polls. Right, right. Yeah. How about you, Joyce? I feel similarly. I think the only time we've gotten responses in the past was to refuse to allow the polls to go in. Um, and uh, I think there's been a lot of progress on the other hand. So um, if, I mean, I don't want it to be another poll hearing where we have to be mm -hmm. really mean. Uh, and, Peter, we have another poll hearing next, next week. time. For next who? Week. For Verizon. For Verizon. 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 It seems like we could get mean with Verizon. We should get mean with Verizon. Yeah, we sure. should not. We have a much larger quantity of polls that source. are problematic because of Verizon and Eversource is solely our much yeah. smaller quantity. Yeah. 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 And and has seen actions yes. in the last probably mm -hmm. one year. Mm -hmm. Okay. I so I would move go ahead that we approve the placement of the polls and it's marked on our map. One one poll. There's one, one poll. Yeah. And it's put in between two other polls. Yeah. Um, that would not close enough to be called the double poll. Um, and uh yeah, uh, a jointly owned poll um uh, as shown on the map. I will second that no comment from the property owners who are near it. So all those in favor. Aye. 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 All right. Go install your poll. Desiree awesome. been sent off to you. Thank you so much. And I will hound down Jesse Martin for you guys. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. No we problem. You. you guys have a good one. You Thank too. Bye-bye. Good night. Okay. okay, new business. First item is to review, vote, and sign on warrant for the 2024 state primary. That's this one right here, right? Yeah. yeah. Does anybody have any questions or concerns? About the warrant. Right. We approve the warrant as the minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The signature not be. I have a couple of inverse checks there. Yeah. Great. Thing. This one gets all three? Yep. Yep. I believe all but the tiles agreement gets all three. So the, right. the double, those two yellow tags are the petition from every source and they were need uh, all three signatures. Okay. All right. Maybe we'll we can yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just getting them excited. <laughs> 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 uh, next item, appointment of election workers. Amy, do you want to speak to that? Oh, I just had a few people reach out who would like to help out in September, but especially November, so they just need to be appointed. One of the um, people on that list is a high school student. She is a senior honor student who is looking to do some community service hours. So I'm very excited about that because I did put a call out to Frontier for a couple of honor students to come in and help out. Okay, so great. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, are these volunteer or are they paid positions? The high school student is volunteer, the rest are paid. 
Okay, so on, on our list, which one is the high school student? That would be Delaney. Okay. And also out of curiosity, does the high school student have to be of voting age or not? Um, so the state of Massachusetts allows you to have two 16 or 17 year old okay. students uh, volunteer. They do not have to be registered to vote. Okay. All right, do I have a motion? I move to approve the appointment of the six people named on this list. Um, as election poll workers. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Yeah, and, so just to back up and clarify, yeah. this is not just for the primary results for the general election? Right, it's for 2024. Okay. Also want to say to the public that Amy, I believe, is still looking for folks for the general election. Still looking for folks for November. Yeah, so if you're interested in being a poll worker, particularly a vote shelter, Amy would be very grateful. Uh, next, appointment of Senior Operator, Highway Department, Dylan. Used to Venice. Used to Venice, thank you. Peace. You want to speak to that? Sure. Um, Brett, Peter, and myself did the interviews of the two existing employees that showed interest from within to move into the senior operator labor. And after reviewing, less interviewing and having a discussion afterwards, we came to the conclusion for to appoint Dylan into that position okay. and and has dylan one, previously worked for the highway department yes yeah oh yeah he, that's what i thought he has quite so he has the most seniority of the two terrific okay. employees um, yeah, both were current employees okay. yes both of them are very good and they both i wished i could make both of them senior operators i mean they're they're both very good qualified Applicants. Good. Okay, do I have a motion I to will appoint? We appoint Dylan Ustavanis as the senior operator of highway department. I'll second. Sorry. He can't. There was the recommendation. The, the additional. Right. That yes. The recommendation oh. includes a requirement ah. to apply additional supervisory training, such as through the Bay State Roads program, within six months of this appointment. And we'll be doing a, uh, <coughs> uh, an ex another probationary period, even though he's an existing employee. Oh, okay. we'll probationary in this position. Review his, his progress as time goes on. So, okay, okay, terrific. I've got your okay. motion. Motion as it. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Dylan, we're so proud of you. Congratulations, Dylan. Uh, discuss and vote on potential date for special town meeting. Uh, he has come up with uh, two separate potential meeting dates, which are in the town administrator meeting packet on page two for the bottom. Uh, 22nd. October 22nd and November 12th. Yes. So just as informational, I, I believe uh, your normal practice has been to hold your special town meetings following a select board meeting. Yeah. You may hold your select prior board. to. Or prior to. Yeah. yeah. You typically do it on a select board night. Is that right? Right. Yeah. Typically, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Is there some yeah. compelling reason uh, to do it outside right. of schedule? So these dates were, you know, your typical dates. Uh, yeah. One thing I do want to note, or there are two notes. Um, the first is the primary requirement that you have to hold the a town meeting is posting of that warrant. When it comes to a special town meeting, you have to actually post the warrant two weeks before the meeting. Annuals are only one week. So it does mean that we have to have it actually printed, finalized and printed so that it can then be posted yes. and then you have two weeks. The other thing is a lot of the potential articles are requests to use free cash. 
in order to use free cash, we need to certify the free cash. Um, I need the accountant is currently on vacation. Um, we're still discussing getting that free cash certified. Yeah. That is pretty much on schedule, except for one piece that is making it problematic. Um, and it is the outstanding uh, invoices to castaways for their police detail. Essentially, we have invoices to an outside entity during FY24 that have not gone paid, which impacts our free cash, which could require a negative on the free cash because we have not received payment on those. So we're looking at what we need to do as a process. Um, it, 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 granted, it is, I believe, around $6,500 or so somewhere around there. Um, so it's not a huge amount, but it does, it is creating a problem. Um, and it is a problem that we have, do have to discuss unless they were to get caught up beforehand. Um, but otherwise, that's the only thing right now. Dara pretty much is on track for getting uh, that that free cash certified. Uh, but she will be back next week. So when we have your board meeting at the end of the month, I can give you a further update as to where we are in certifying mm -hmm. free cash. Is it certifying free cash something the state does? Like we it's a process that. that we're doing with them. And we just never know when it's going to be. That's true. Yep. Which is why this unpaid thing also helps slow it down. <laughs> and which is why we're concerned about when we can definitively know when the free cash can get certified um, because that piece is impacting yeah. the process. We, we have to give them a definite number. Yes. And, and then they are looking at it. Yes. Right. Yep. And um, so it seems like the later the two dates might be the safer, more realistic. Yeah. Because I, I don't remember free cash being done by like October 1st is when we have to sign that warrant, right? Well, or I you guess just, October you just can't roll the, the, it would be impossible for town meeting members to vote on an article requesting use of free cash if you haven't certified yet. So it's really the town meeting date is the date, but it would be good to know that you have, you don't want to be walking okay. into town meeting and say, we still have not heard from the state. We're going to have to hold off on this meeting. Right. Yeah. I mean, unless if, if there were other articles that were just really imperative. Yes. Um, to get done. And there's an advantage to doing those earlier, uh, like the October 22nd date. And, you know, like have another one later. Or, or any of the yeah, so I'm uh, curious, are any of the um, potential articles on the warrant that time sensitive? The, the only time sensitive one that I'm aware of is the CPA fund request to yeah. do the center school project. Uh, I don't have the specific detail, but I do recall Judy mentioning uh, a request that the meeting be in October or that C the, the CPC funds or the CPA fund, sorry. Be appropriated in October. in October. But I don't know how so definitive that, that, that still is. Yeah, that was yeah, back in yeah. June. Or if, right. if you could double, if we, I see here we don't have to set the. We can just uh, that 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 two yeah. more weeks and check with June yeah. and see if that is if November twelfth is a problem or if yeah. they, they yeah. need October twenty second. That's no problem. And also a request from the board that um, Castaways pony up what they owe, so we can yeah, just I, move which on we've here. asked them for before. Yeah, we're <laughs> right. sure it's worth them. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I, it's not really an agenda item to this meeting, but maybe for another meeting, the question, and he might need some time to look into it. Mm -hmm. What is it we can do if they don't pay those bills? Mm -hmm. And. Uh, that's a... And along those lines, Pete, do you know whether they are up to date on their taxes or not? They were up to date as of or as of July 31st, but then, of course, the next tax bill came out on August 1st. Yeah, uh, but then they were behind before. The, they were behind, but they didn't June catch up. So now there's the new quarterly. Uh, yeah, which quarterly, they may or may not be behind on. Which they right. may or may not be behind on. Also, there was the fact that in August, uh, the business was going to be purchasing 
the property because the property was owned by a separate entity mm -hmm. and there was supposed to be a closing that was supposed to happen in early August so that the business and the property were owned or yeah, Castaway's business was also owning the land. Uh, the communication that we've heard recently does not indicate that that happened, um, but a closing would have required up, up, uh, getting up to date on your real estate taxes as part of your uh, reporting process. Um, but I don't know. We have, we've been trying to reach out and unfortunately are not getting responses. So um, I don't have specific details. I, I can just confirm that they were definitely caught up on their property taxes as of July 31st. Okay. And then they, so at least they paid what they had owed. Yes. As of June. Okay. All right. So we will table the decision about a potential date until the next meeting and you'll get more information from uh, the center school committee about whether one yeah. particular date or another is necessary yeah. their grant process it seemed like their grants were they were going to have some decisions in september yeah and if the decision came out one way they would need to get the commitment within the time period yeah so but if the decision is not out yet then they may not know they may not know by the end of this by our next meeting yeah okay. uh and so, yeah, I did. So on this same topic, I did put together a list of all the possible articles that you could consider for inclusion yeah. on this warrant. <laughs> and I'm happy to put together a draft of that warrant for your next meeting with all of these ones, unless there are certain ones you definitively don't want to include. Mm -hmm. uh, some of these are some standard operating procedures. Uh, one is um, moving the opioid front funds from the stabilization fund to a special reserve account, not review, review account, yeah. a reserve yeah, account. Correct. Uh, this is actually happening in almost all communities. Massachusetts originally, where everybody was advised to create a stabilization <laughs> fund when those funds were coming in. Unfortunately, it doesn't mean it's very problematic to actually use and expend the funds. Mm -hmm. So, But if you put it into a special reserve account, it makes it a lot easier for us to, rather than going back to town meeting every time we want to go use funds for opioid addiction services or educational, it actually can go into the reserve fund and be under the control of the Federal Board of Health in order to do such a oh, okay. um, So it just makes it more flexible um, and all other communities are doing this um, and it's just a, it's a what you legally can do with the money and how based on the type of account. Yep. Uh, item number two, budget. We do have that prior year bill of the assessors, CA, CAI technologies, which is simply the assessing platform that we have on the public website. Yeah. Um, this prior year bill does not need to be in your special town meeting. You always have prior year bills in your annual. It's just we happen to know. We happen to know about this bill now, so I just listed it, and it's possible you can do it. You don't have to. Right. Um, number three was that center school CPA. Number four, in community development, we have two different grant items that need capital funds. The first is that MVP grant, which I will mention later on, but essentially this is a reimbursement grant, meaning we need to allocate the capital funds to then be able to pay the invoices on that project, and then the state will reimburse us. So that was an $82,000 change. Uh, Grant, so we need to allocate that 82000 which we will then get returned. Um, that 82000 is over the course of two fiscal years, I should know, too. Oh, okay. um, uh, and then the comprehensive plan grant, we had a commitment when we applied for that grant to do a 10% match. Therefore, uh, we need $8,426 as the match portion for that grant, and that is uh, for work on the comprehensive plan. Okay. Those are two grant items. The next one is the fire department. They currently have a special reserve fund where all of their inspectional fees are going into the reserve fund, but they cannot expend money from it because it's in a reserve fund. So the request is to convert it into a revolving account you have in your general bylaws a uh, list of various revolving accounts. Essentially, revolving accounts are created as a mechanism to be able to collect fees. Those fees go explicitly into that revolving account, and the controlling body can then use those collected fees on their program. So the same thing is requested here, just like the existing ones, is to create a fire department revolving account. 
that is explicitly set up to collect all fees. And then those fees would be used by the fire department in order to either do education, training, or provide for equipment to yeah. do those inspections. Yeah. Um, are, are there monies currently in a special reserve fund? Are. If so, how much is current? And with well, that, and with that being moved over, so yes. To Yes, this item five is a two-parter. It's first to create the revolving fund, so you do the general bylaw amendment, and then once that article is approved, uh, approved, the next article would be to move the monies from that special reserve into the revolving account. Uh, the purpose of this revolving account is it would never be funded by a uh, town meeting. It will own, it will be self-funded. Uh, there are some revolving accounts that are out there that do get accommodated by town meeting appropriations, but this one wouldn't. Um, I, off the top of my head, I don't recall. And the chief is not on right now, but he will be joining us later that um, yeah. have that. Um, this item number six um, is a placeholder. Um, I believe the select board had been discussing that when I think it was when Brian was here, actually, the potential of purchasing a strip of land that is adjacent yeah. to Hurley uh, Field uh, along the River Road. Um, I don't believe that piece of land is necessarily up for sale, but I believe the discussion was that a board member maybe, I'm not sure the details on this, would be reaching out or talking with that landowner to see if they were, or if they were even interested. Um, this is more of a oh, okay. possibility. I don't know if that yeah, no, the, the, item the, has progressed. The adjacent property has been talked about as oh, possible, yeah. as a possible, but I don't think it is. I don't. Right. I, I never yeah. heard that it was. Yeah, we need, and it's been up that way for for so several since long. my kids were in oh. uh, <laughs> rec sports. A little while. They are about thirty right now. So, so no, I, got, yeah, I, I think we, it was bubbling to the surface sometime in the spring. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, so if something has happened to change that, right. it's possible. But if there's nothing, right. That has changed the when the stance of the was talking. I thought we yeah. could kind of find out about that. Yeah. Oh, Lynn, Lynn was maybe looking into well, it. I think Lynn was. Okay. Do you know something? I mean, the only thing that I can add is that the owner of Ralph passed away. And so. Oh, the heirs may be right. more amenable. And they right. Started, I think that, 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 that was now the that to brought this Potentially to make sure that other heirs or whoever's going to. To get it is aware. Yeah, Ralph yeah, certainly yeah. was aware and chose not to ever sell it. Yeah. So that's all. No. Well, whose plate is that on? Well, I can. I'll. I'll look into it a little bit further. Yeah. So that next week or next meeting. Sorry. Um. I'll be able yeah. to let you know if it's something that we should consider or wait. Well, okay. I can see it before. Yeah. Okay. Um. Item seven. The police department um, has a request. It has to do with appropriating and repurposing funds for purchasing of new firearms. I don't have enough details just yet explicitly mm -hmm. about this, uh, whether this really needs to happen for your special or if it can happen for your annual, but I can talk with uh, Chief Sabigny later on. So, no, didn't we just do yeah. that at our town meeting? Just that no, way? I, 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 I think we put it off to oh. the special. <clears throat> to a fall because I, um, I feel like this request has been made. This yeah. was sounding, yeah, familiar. yeah, but I, I think that this was moved over into a fall. No, special. No. See, I thought the I thought we approved the uh, the uh, purchase of the new firearms. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm trying to remember that there was finance a finance committee meeting that there was a police vehicle, there was a police vehicle, vehicle. Kind of. but, but, but I just thought cars. it was like as part, you know, yeah. I, it did come up for discussion. Yeah, yeah. I'm clear. Yeah, no, I think there was a, a fund that was not being utilized. That right, the tra I think it was training. Yeah, they oh, did yeah. not need as much uh, right. money for training, um, and they've got all their officers through the training, and they want to repurpose it. But uh, I, I, I'm remembering. I, I, I don't remember it being an annual town meeting, so I think yeah, we I did. We did. I feel like there was a discussion to, to a call special. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, eight, um, 
Julie and I looking into a little bit further, we believe this actually was already corrected. So in looking at the appropriations that were voted on for FY25 and what we have as the pay rate, it actually meets the, so I think this was an outstanding note from the interim TAs, but it actually was resolved when you did do your June. So I can double check on that because as I recall, it was appropriating, it was transferring money from a fund that did not cover salaries right. into a fund that they could use for salaries. Yeah, uh, I, this, think this, I think yeah, I think it happened yeah. last fiscal happen. year. Yeah. 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 And it impacted we, we that the transfer rate. Yeah. 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 So I think it, this it is actually involved. just a old note yeah. that was it, there. That, that may not. Yeah, that may already be rectified. Okay. And then finally, there are two zoning items. Um, the first is to approve the FEM, the new, the latest FEMA firm maps. Um, this is simply procedural. Essentially, you approving FEMA firm maps valid verifies FEMA's map. It's not saying that you're adding any requirements. It's just allowing and ensuring that those properties that are within the flood zone get flood insurance. Uh, there were two additional properties that fell into the flood zone now due to additional modeling that was done. Uh, this is more process. Really what can happen is if those property owners determine that, yeah, my property is at a low elevation. However, my house was built at a higher elevation. They can do what's called a LOMA. Uh, I believe it's a LOMA where they uh, submit a um, an elevation study to the FEMA to verify that their structure, their habitable structure is actually above that and that that's a private property um, function. It's not something municipality does, but all municipalities, because we always refer to the FEMA firm maps, we have to acknowledge in the bylaws that we're utilizing the latest version. So this is just to yeah. um, refer to the latest version. We can't reject it and say these maps are wrong. I mean, you we can't. could. But it could negatively impact the property owners that would benefit from being able to yeah. um, get that insurance. Yeah. Um, the second item is not directly related to FEMA, the firm maps, but it is related to the floodplain. And it's specifically an amendment that the planning board has been working on to amend the floodplain flood plain bylaw that to get it a little more in line with mass general law, but also to add in clear process and procedure and what boards need to review it, what staff may possibly have to review it. Um, it's a little cumbersome right now. The main point here is select board, you probably recall, you don't draft zoning articles, you That's wait right. for the planning board to submit one. So essentially this is notification that the planning board is working on one that might be ready oh. for, the, to, yeah. for the select board to receive during your open warrant period, um, but obviously they have to hold a public hearing. They have to finalize their bylaw. Myself, Sylvie, are, and Sylvie and I are meeting with uh, the chairs of Con Common Planning Board next week to discuss where they are with the draft, see where we can make improvements, and see what their process is, and kind of discuss this timing for special town meeting. If, if I remember correctly, these, these could have been ready for annual town meeting, except that the FEMA maps were in, and Ooh, yeah. if they approve its amendments, they just have to go back and do it again after the FEMA maps were approved. I think that's that correct. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. So that they just put everything off. Yeah. Rather than have to bring it up twice. I think you're right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Those are all the possible yeah. articles that I'm aware of. I don't know if the okay. board is aware of or wants to take into consideration additionals. Okay. Um, there are a lot. I know that this is a little yeah. bit more than you but, typically, but, and it's not yeah. like you have to. Right. But it's all like, I was going to say, some of those are probably going to fall off now. Yeah. 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 It's not, I mean, 10 articles could take 10 minutes. You know? <laughs> okay. nice or, or, or even 11. Or even 11. Yeah. All right, next item is to discuss and potentially vote on the potential venue change for future town meetings. Before we move into discussion, I want to say, if I'm understanding correctly, your your potential calendar for the special town meetings means that we would need to set the date and location at our next board meeting. No, 
says the Tuesday, August 27th on well. That's when you're determining when town meeting is going to be. You don't have to have oh, the location have locked in until you finalize the warrant. I should the warrant. say that earlier, and yeah. I transpose that information. And you could always, after you open the town meeting warrant, you can change the date. Yeah. It just has to be a later date. You can't do it earlier. Got it. Okay. But you can always push it. <laughs> so there's the, the venue change for town meetings. We're talking about annual town meeting. Uh, no, you yeah. could do it for well, this well, is up for well, your because in general we we have special town meetings here and annual town meeting. Yeah, it's yeah. it's up for the board to decide right. if you want to do one right. location or two local. Yeah. Yep. In the past we've yeah. had two different locations. Yeah, yeah, but it's just because uh it, for special town meetings, the population who comes is fits in this room. Mm -hmm. Um it's not been a problem. Um, but we want a place that's uh, very accessible. That's really the school, although town hall is also accessible. It doesn't always hold enough people uh, that we get an annual town meeting. It's a bit crowded for annual town meeting. And that's my concern. It doesn't about even have it in the upstairs auditorium. It doesn't hold that many people. Um, well, if you're really squeezed in there elbow to elbow, you can't get 200 people in there, but sometimes we have 300 people in town meeting. Uh, right. And that's, that's my concern annual about meeting. this building is that for a big meeting, it would not be the one for yeah. So I, I think for an annual town meeting, it should be the elementary school. Now whether it's indoors or outdoors, that's um, I mean that that certainly is both are possible. We've done it in the gym before, and we've done it elsewhere with outdoors. I, but I think that often will depend on exactly when it is. You're right, right. In April, we've never done it outdoors in April, but we've always done it outdoors when we've done it in May or June. So that's, there certainly have been complaints, so particularly this well, year about the heat. One complaint. <laughs> there's been one complaint. Well, yeah. I heard from a, a published news privately. Yeah, complaint. Yeah, but, but I, I think yeah, yeah, true. We didn't necessarily yeah. take a poll either. Right, yeah. We also didn't hear the complaints that we would have gotten if it had been inside in that true. Yeah, gym. yeah right. that size would true. not have been in that, good in that weather. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, so okay. uh, we can table this for yeah, future yeah. This is more informational and discussion time. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, next item to discuss and vote on the proposed fee schedule update for the fire department. If I don't see it, yeah. Skip yeah. that and I, come back to it. Yeah, I didn't understand the stuff that we got in our packet on that, so I had actually questions on it. Which you, I assume, want to ask of the right, yeah. fire chief. Okay. Uh, review and vote on regional animal control services agreement. The agreement which we mm -hmm. thought was happening, then wasn't happening, and now is actually happening. Uh, they approved the, it. Yeah. They approved yes. it. Yeah, the advisory committee did approve Waitley's um, joining the program. All right. Uh, Kyle and Kyle is here um, representing the Regional Animal Control Service uh, Program, but uh, we've been updating the information on our platforms and distributing information about contact and how to get a hold of the Animal you know, Control Services. Um, and now we should just finalize the agreement. Um, the agreement is uh, essentially the same agreement that you did see earlier this year when you were contemplating yes. in the program. Uh, yeah. And the only note that I do have in here is that when you put together the FY25 budget, it was the understanding that our participation would be $5,234. The, the end calculation yes. is $5,299. So there is a $65 discrepancy, which we can easily rectify in a town meeting or yeah. even a reserve fund transfer. It's such a small yeah. dollar amount, it could yeah. easily be a reserve fund transfer. But mm -hmm. I just do, I want to note that one thing. I believe yeah. that program participation, Kyle, you can certainly go into it. That the is always based on your budget, your your program budget, and the number of communities that you also have in the program. Yeah, so basically, it's whatever the budget is set at here, it's been split amongst all the member counties. So, right. And I thought there was some verbiage in here regarding how it. Now you, yeah, you it's uh, come up with a it's formula. based off the EQB of the town as well as the population. Yes, seventy-five, you know, twenty-five population, and then it's swapped. Right. 
Yeah, I, I do remember reading that when this it, it, when it came to me in email. It'll be towards the back of that packet. Would there be any prorating given that we weren't approved for membership <laughs> until? <laughs> Well, I mean, that would be about that sixty-five dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm Yeah, and I think um, I mean, Kyle can speak to it. The settlements still okay. Yeah, they have been they have yeah. been providing us some significant mutual aid during <laughs> this Catholic <laughs> service yeah. that yeah. Um, we are very thankful yeah. Yeah. to Thank the you. shelter and the the programs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any more discussion, or do I have a motion? I move that we sign the Regional Animal Control Services Agreement. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, that will need to be signed. Is there a signature? Yeah, it's fine. You will see that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next item to discuss and vote on posting of animal inspector position. Newly updated description of the position, and I believe that Pete would like to post it to the public, and he needs our approval to do that. Yes. So the animal inspector position it, it relates to the ACO, but it is independent because it specifically deals with animal inspections, but uh, primarily rabies, um, uh, animal rabies issues, as well as the main piece is our barn inspections. The barn inspections are going to be happening. October, November time, uh, we do need an animal inspector in order to perform that. This is a stipend position with minimal uh, need. This position, it has been funded both as the stipend, but also a line item for uh, mileage reimbursement because this individual would be using their private vehicle. And so we do have funds of allocated for mileage reimbursement. Uh, the job description that the personnel committee approved yeah, um, how do we do? Was pulled together from example inspection all or animal inspector job descriptions from other similar communities. Um, also, finding following the guidance of the state department that oversees this program or this process. Um, so we do have that finalized, but um, yeah, just a request from the board to now be able to post to order. And motion. Um, or any. Questions or uh, I, discussion? I, I read this 13 uh, times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I move that we uh, go ahead with this description of the animal inspector. Second. All those in favor? I, 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 I'm sorry. No. Oh. You're, you're fine with that one. We have to step back, Kyle. Oh. Uh, back on, no, we don't need Kyle per se. Okay. Um, with that regional animal control program, Every participating community has to have a representative on the advisory committee, and there needs to be an alternate to act in their stead in case they're not there. The history has been it's either a select board member, a town administrator, or a police chief serving in one of those two roles. So you, the board does need to appoint its representative and its alternate representative. Uh, fine. For this year, given ongoing litigation i would suggest the police chief i'm just yeah. saying he's he's really got the most knowledge of the right yeah uh, and there are a couple that do serve on it so that okay. wouldn't be an issue yeah mm -hmm. and they don't meet that frequently yeah mm -hmm. right. uh, I, I would suggest uh, the police chief and we need an alternate then and i'm happy to be an alternate if I, or one of the board members All right. well okay. I think I could nominate then officially uh, Chief Savini to be our representative and BK to be our alternate. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Sorry, I missed that. No, that's great. Uh, old business, ARPA, CLF, RF money. A variety of things. Well, before, before we move on, I just want to, I want to yeah. go back to the poll. You put a potential motion here for the approval of the poll. Do you want us oh. with, with more specific language? Do you want us to go back and revisit if necessary? It's not necessary. Okay. No. So I, was, I, I was just looking at the yeah. specificity there. 
the no the, and it was just motion a, was not what you what you did as a motion was completely fine because you did reference the plan as submitted okay and that's the main point but just um, sorry so that that's a great point though does the board want me to give you recommended motions for all items or just primarily public hearings i've always done it for public hearings because they are pretty specific but i would say motion so your hearings or items which you think specificity mm -hmm. in the motion is necessary. Yeah. 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 So I would use, use, use your discretion. Okay. You can always just pretend I didn't write something if I did. Or pretend you did. <laughs> yeah. 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 But no, what your motion was. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. I just saw this yeah. here in the motion. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for checking, Fred. Uh, Argus LFRF, there are several requests. For the remaining unobligated $27,625, uh, first is the request from Keith, possibly for uh, automatic door openers at town hall, library, and town offices. And this is, a, this is ongoing in the aspect that uh, it started some time ago at the uh, town hall. Mm -hmm. And then the library, after they got their renovations done, is expressing interest in having the handicap bathroom in the basement. So now that they have the, the lift to get people downstairs, mm -hmm. if you're in a wheelchair, it's very you know, it's difficult without having an opener to get in and out of the bathroom. So mm -hmm. This just makes it easier. And also Amy had spoken to me in regards to the to two doors here because it can handicap people coming in yeah. to get to the counter to pay or need yeah. services from the clerk or the treasurer would also be a yeah. good inclusion. So that yeah. puts a total of nine doors because there's six at the town hall. That were I, in the I, thought the, I think the, the town hall doors have been approved already. Yes. There's already was twenty thousand yeah. dollars in ARPA money towards that. Right. So a little bit of time has gone by. It's been stagnant to get completed. Um originally when we first were trying for um, get this done, we were hoping to just be below the chapter 30 B threshold, but it's obvious that it's not. So it's going to require more of a, a bidding standpoint or quotes, things of that mm -hmm. nature. So things change there and, and the method that we are trying to to get this done. Yeah. Yeah, so, sorry to be like, a, I'm not trying to push back or anything, but for Town Hall, you said there were four doors, six That's doors. Right. So like the entrance at the front and the back. There the is both, doors both and bath and on the two first, bathroom doors. First and floor, two. there's four, four, one, two, four, and upstairs, two doors. Oh, there's two doors upstairs. The door that goes um, out front to the staircase, is that is that one of them? Yes. So you would need wheelchairs to be able to get out to the staircase? Oh, that was... Yeah. Oh, the front door? Yeah. Back door. Both men and women's bathrooms has yeah. three. Now, the back door as well, the, right? Which is really the handicap entrance. The exterior double side light door. So that's Outs, that's an exterior door that's downstairs. The yeah. upstairs auditorium door and the door next to the community room. See, that's the other one. Oh, downstairs. Oh, the downstairs. So yes. So only one so upstairs. Only one upstairs. Oh, okay. That's right. Yeah. There's no need of getting one out to the right. stairway. To the Correct. stairway. Right. Yeah, okay. And then for this building, it would be there's like two doors. Those you two get doors yeah. are what would be required here. Uh, and then at the library, just they already have the, the library already yeah. has the exterior door that was done some time ago. Yeah, but that was before before the, the bathrooms. Lift, so. 
where a handicap. So that's an point. interior door that we'll be doing on that one. Okay. Yep. And then that's it. So that makes a total of nine. Nine. Okay. And nine means you have to go after base as a total is going to be. Well, we're, we're in that. Yeah, we're certainly. It's, it's what's going to be the easiest for us. Okay. All right. No, just wanted to kind of go through what it is. I'm, I'm going to get asked. This, that's the real yes. reason I ask all these questions. And that's okay. Someone's going to ask. You want, a, you want answers? You want a, yeah. you want so answer. we're, we're looking to do all of these as one bid. Yeah. I feel that would right. be beneficial. If you're, you're bringing a contractor in, you're, and I just think you're going to get a better right. price to come yeah. in. No, no, I'm just versus yeah. to clarifying. Oh, and, and we don't want to do the restrooms here. We're just thinking it's, it's just the preference for people getting in for services primarily. The likelihood of Yes. Yeah, the usage by wheelchair folks is really low. Clear on uh, the restrooms, I think. Correct. Uh, and, but is it the, we've already allocated twenty thousand towards the town hall. Doors. This would be just an additional. So this would how you wrote it. Up. Eleven thousand five hundred. The only problem, though, is that this estimate right now. Does not exactly. include the electrical work. We're not quite, yeah, I'm not 100%. Yeah, not 100%. I just have spoken to another company that just did the town of Hatfield's town hall. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to him, and he over the phone gave me a, an estimate of about $3,500 a door. But he also said he was going to send somebody here to, to look at it yeah. in all of our locations and give me a tight, a tighter number, realizing that it's we're going to require additional bidding numbers from him at a later time. But so it's like, kind of a soft request at yeah, this point so because you're it's not a firm number. waiting for firm numbers to really make the request. Correct. Okay. Because, right. like, for instance, there's a possibility where the, the double door here, mm -hmm. normally you have to have a, a pad on the either side. Here, we would only need one on the outside, one on the inside, and one within the vestibule. So that's three hit pads instead of four mm -hmm. for two doors. So there might be a slight savings there just when they do the evaluation. Oh, okay. Is there a way that they can do one on the outside and one inside that opens all the doors? So then you only have. Well, the problem is if you go into the vestibule and then you start looking at the bulletin board. Oh, it'll close. It'll close. <laughs> and now you're stuck in the best <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we talked we talked through it earlier today. Yeah, it's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, you know. I about all the ones I've seen where I work. And uh, when you've got that double door set up, there's still two buttons inside, but there's only one, like, uh, electrical box yes. that had to be installed. Yeah. Yeah. It's got two buttons. But you it. could always do one button and it's opening both sets at the same time. That's one other way to do it, where that that oh. kit is actually sending the charge to both I see. operations. I, yes, I didn't. I've not ever seen that. Yeah. Um, where I work, but there. You know. Whatever the electrician or the, the yeah. door guy would. He, they would know what's yeah. replacing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next, uh, town clerk Amy has updated her request for funding yeah. of electronic voting machines. <laughs> Right. I secured a grant for five thousand dollars. Congratulations! Free and clear. It's not a reimbursement. It's not um anything with the match or anything like that. Um, I did get a quote for one that you guys should have. Yeah. Here. So I would just leave the additional couple thousand dollars. Um. Joyce, you had asked at the last meeting like what programming would be, and I did talk to them, and it's about $570. Yeah. Yeah. So what people are going to ask me is how much do how much do the do the people cost? Right. So if we're doing it because we're comparing being done by um, by hand counting, and this is just the counting, right? People still yeah. will do their ballots the same way. But, yes. Um, but the yes. ballots are going to be entered into this. Into this machine. Into and this. it's going to count it. And at the end of the night, I'm going to take a take a tape. And that's it. We won't make counters staying yeah. until midnight. And is this a, a scanner? Yes. 
So it's an optical scanning yes. system. Um, and uh, so each time we have an election, there's a $570 cost. Yeah, at least in this year. Yeah. Um, so uh, we won't probably have it in time for this year's election. We will not. But in any given election year, it's number of elections times $570 is. So for each election, how much does it cost us for the people to stay? So that number would for be for November. My coworkers get approximately twenty dollars an hour. As counters, I have ideally five teams of two, so that's ten people uh -huh. at eight to nine next time. Then let's say four out. Let's say the big one for like November. Yeah. So that would be. This is just that, it's just these easy. aren't like you, how many hours I didn't catch that. Probably four. There's four hours. So and it's twenty per hour. That's me, eight hundred dollars. Okay. Yeah. You're quick for the calculator. <laughs> well, with like eighty <laughs> round numbers, so that was like yeah. Uh, so eight hundred dollars on a big election. What about on like? A local election a where a hundred people. It's about two and a, it, it was two and a half hours, and I had four teams of two, so that's eight people. That's two and a half hours saying like there's no discrepancies or anything like that. That's about four hundred. Okay. Um. So the, it's it's numbers that are like. Some, sometimes it's going to be less, sometimes it's right. going to be. I did more. ask if we could um, use paper ballots for local elections because the turnout is significantly lower. The state said no. So, yeah, so, like use a tabulator for state and federal elections and just use hand counting. Yeah. You so, can't, yeah. People get still, but they said no, you can't go back. So, this is not voting machines. This is a correct tabulator. It's just reading them, so people are still going to fill out their their ballot yeah. and still the ballot it. It would be look. nice if we could still crank it, <laughs> and then take it out of the crank. It will make the little sucky the... noise as it goes in. Yeah, can you actually walk us through the physical process of yeah. how it works? Sure. So a voter will come in. The ballot will look a little bit different. Okay. It's not going to be the tri or buy or tri folded paper ballots that you get now. It's one sheet. Okay. You're going to mark your ovals. You're going to go to the machine and you're going to slide it in. And then you can get your I voted sticker and be on your merry list. Do you get a receipt that says you how you do not get it? a receipt. You don't get a receipt now. Right. Right, but we know you have a piece of paper. But but there will be a, a hard well, you'll a, a still piece have of paper you'll that will be a record. Your oh. in ticket that you get when you check in. Okay. Oh, and you'll still have like the, the ballots themselves yeah. are not they don't go away. They don't get right. shredded as soon as they go <laughs> in. No, 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 I have to keep those for twenty-four months. Twenty-seven months for a federal election. Okay. Uh one question I had when your previous request was seventeen thousand dollars for two tabulators. Yes. For a regular and a backup. Yeah. Now we're only one. Do we need a backup? So the state recommends a backup in case your machine fails. However, the state also allows hand counting if your machine fails. So I know that the town kind of balked at Jesus seventeen thousand dollars. That's a lot for two machines. I would honestly be fine and comfortable with one machine and if it breaks or something happens then we, we still know we, we have still the count. institutional we still hand, hand, hand count those we will hand count the okay. ones that, that was my question that getting one machine didn't commit us to essentially no having a i mean in an ideal wonderful awesome world i would have two machines yeah. and i could have one here for early voting and not have to lug it over but the machines that they have now though especially the one that i want it's not that it's it's not a big giant thing. Like, mm -hmm. It's definitely it's like portable. a size of a fax machine or something. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, because we only have one precinct, there's no Wi-Fi or anything like that, so the chances of hacking are zero. Oh, okay. It literally is not that. connected to the internet. It's literally not connected to the internet. It's just plugged in and it's counting the ovals and that. Yeah. that. 
Yeah, and that's literal in its actual literal meaning. Yeah. Not the way it's a lot of people use literally. Literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> when, currently, when we cast ballots, they go into the box, which is locked, and yes. no one has access to that. What happens to the physical ballots after they get run, run through the machine? Um, they're they're stored into the machine. There is a compartment just like the ballot box. The they all go in there, and you hope that they don't get like jumbled up because well, there is an access. Obviously, there's access to get into it if they get jumbled up or if something happens, and then they just get taken out at the end of the night and placed in the okay. So they're they're in this in this there is in, a, in, a, in a locked container yes. on election yep. day. Yeah. Yep. Yep. There is a it's like the opposite of the paper tray on your printer. Right. There's exactly. It doesn't come right, out. Right. Right. That, that's there. that's. It that's right. Right. Yeah. could be subject to a paper jam. So could be. If yeah. there's a paper jam. Then is there a, like an alternative place to lock them up? Like you might have to remove some if there's a. If there's a paper jam, I would take the paper out and leave it in the compartment if I could until the end. If uh -huh. not, the state does allow removal, witnessed removal, and placed in a locked thing, oh, okay. which is how it is now. Okay. So we have, we already have that locked bin or lockable bin. Well, that's the ballot vault. Yes. Yes. But yeah. I, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about the, the ballot box itself. But yeah. no, if there's ever an issue, I have bins that are lockable on site that I put any extra ballots. So, like when I bring the early voting ballots, they're in a locked bin. Yeah. And then they get counted at the end of the night. Okay. They're actually placed in a locked bag and placed in the locked bin. In case of flooding. flooding. You need one yes. more layer of water. <laughs> In the locked closet. Yeah. <laughs> Within. <laughs> yes. Uh, none of these are things that we need to vote on tonight, but this is new information and it yeah. does make it more palatable. And I would still hold the informational session at this lock. Yeah. 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 There's and I think still it, the issue yeah. with community. Yeah. Support. And I think, yeah, yeah put something in the scoop and, and don't be afraid to put numbers in the scoop. Because I think if, if people object to like, oh my gosh, because I, I think the first time we went through this, the estimate was it's going to be two thousand dollars each time to program it, but knowing that it's actually a third of that or yes. less mm -hmm. yeah. to do the to actually program it, because that also seems like kind of a racket. Two thousand dollars, really? That's a lot. That's an awful lot. Yeah, that's, 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 that's too much. That's pretty simple. Yeah. So. Now our estimates five hundred dollars. If we were a large city. It would still be like eight hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Thank you. Next request. Thank you, Amy. Next thank request you. is from the fire department. There's some information, but no fire department to speak yeah. to. It, so we'll. Thank you. I, I can happy to. I I'd be happy to <laughs> give. So I have spoken with the fire chief on this. Um, originally, you received the estimate for the mini split, which was about $10,000. You did have a number of questions, primarily on to, uh, as to occupancy and what space it was going to benefit. Uh, in talking with the chief, the mini split would actually be able to provide uh, conditioning to the meeting room, the radio room, the, the chief's office, as well as the bathroom. Um, so this mini split not only helps to condition it, but also helps to dehumidify the the space as well, which the fire department uh, is dealing with significant mold or has dealt with significant mold. So significant it would be running it all the time. It would likely it, it, yes, in order to deal with well, only during high humidity issues or when there is humidity issues, um, they would be running it. Yes. Right, which would be also when you have usage charges. So it could get quite expensive. It could. Yeah. I, I think that you then have to take the pros and cons, right? The, when you do have humidity issues and you're having mold, it then is an airborne issue. Right. So like, yeah, I don't want to worry about that. And it's exactly. also remediation. Issue. From remediation, right. which those are long-term tend to be more expensive if you let them get exacerbated as opposed to doing yeah. preventative type of mechanism, which you're right. Okay. It does mean that the energy yeah. bill could be higher unless we were to put in a heat pump down the road and convert it into a heat pump where it then reduces the energy load, but it's still uh, powering the, the right. split. 
I'm always baffled I, uh, by the heat pump slash mini split right. question. They're the same thing. They, right? Yeah, a mini split is a kind of heat pump. Kind yes, of it's heat. a kind of heat pump. Yeah. This one is like the less expensive one. That's not really it's not really a heat pump per se. It's just attached on the exterior of the, the building and it's running drawing electricity directly. Whereas there are other heat pumps that are actually utilizing the ground. Yeah. Oh, ground yeah, source. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, most yeah, most mini splits are air source. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Not ground source. Okay. Um, thank yeah. you. Yes. That's, thank you. That's where I was going. Yeah. Appreciate that. Okay. And then the other Happy point was um he did have the request for three windows replacements um but he didn't have an explicit number now he does have an estimate and it's about 6500 in order to replace those three windows would that help with the humidity so, so that is one of my points to when he and i were discussing if it had to be one project or the or the other i would recommend the windows you want to do an envelope improvement before you before do you any do system exam. improvement yeah, um, because the envelope is the biggest issue. Yeah. And so if there are problems with the windows, they directly relate to yeah. moisture impeding or cutting in or even transferring of the heat. And if he get, goes from a single paint to the double paint, it's really going to help with the uh, right. uh, heat and cooling. Um, yeah. we, get, we get notifications every so often, maybe the town does too. There's a lot of programs for energy savings kind of improvements yeah. that um, and I don't I don't know if uh, because I'm being asked like I feel like once a month yes. I'm getting an email asking me to have the mass CEC folks come over and check my house and do a bunch of free stuff to it that I've done it often enough that I'm pretty sure right now there's nothing more they'll do for free but do, do, do <laughs> yeah, we, you're allowed to do, do we every yeah or two. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, you can do it in a year or two. So the municipality we... has an availability for that, and Keith and I and Sylvia are actually doing an appointment September 9th. We're oh, doing okay. it here, okay. but then there may be additional buildings that we can do as well. It, it would be great to have somebody professionally look at that because there may be better insulation. There may be yes. things that can help mitigate that. Um, in that the like you you saw for yourself. Those assessments really are putting together a menu of things that you could do, but it's not telling you you have to do this. Um, so it is just a free program that allows us to see all of the possible uh, improvements that we can do. But with that assessment, we can use that to then apply for grants to pay for because it right. really is the first you step to for you to demonstrate needs. where, yeah, yeah, exactly, prove that you're not just going to be putting insulation where you already have an R46 or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Moving along to select board liaison updates. Thank you. Start. Thank you, Keith. Thanks, Keith. Oh, um, I've got two things on the senior center. We had a nice meeting uh, last time I reported that we just had a nice meeting with the design group that's doing a feasibility study. There'll be uh, an update meeting tomorrow. Um, so that is progressing. Uh, and then next week on the 21st, there'll be an information fair and cruise night at Hurley Park. There'll be a food truck. I don't know which food truck it'll be. You'd have to call and bother the senior center folks for that. But that's at four o'clock at Hurley Heath. And um, I think it technically goes till 630 or something like that. But uh, you know, it's, it's just the information tables from various organizations, and I assume people will be putting their vehicles out for cruise night and a party atmosphere. And um, then don't miss it. I'm going to try and get there and get out of work in time and get there before they close. What's the date again? Sorry. I don't know what the food oh. truck is. <laughs> so, what's the date again? The date is uh, next Wednesday, the 21st. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's it for me. Water department met last week. They are purchasing some, they have problems ongoing with um, saddles that connect various underground pipes, uh, rusting through and breaking. Mm -hmm. So they're looking for something that's longer lasting. They're going to be purchasing some stainless steel ones that seem to be, they're going to be purchasing at least a test. Same stainless steel ones and see how they work. 
where they make a significant investment. And then second is they are making decisions about the difference between residential water, drinking water hookups and um, sprinkler or long sprinkler as in fire sprinkler or hookups. Uh, whether there would be an additional charge and what that might be if folks wanted to have fire suppression systems either in their homes or in their businesses. Oh. Would there be an additional charge for that? Because uh, they need a higher pressure or something? Uh, no, it's more like it's another, it's another hookup. Going oh, you'll just hook it up to your device. Yeah, yeah. Um, one you drink and one you suppress via with. Yeah. And it is a it is a bit of a Oh. Oh. Okay. That's that. And I had a South County EMS meeting. Uh, we approved a promotion policy for a Filling vacancies, pretty much in anticipation of establishing some imminent change of the structure, such that it's in anticipation of establishing positions of lieutenant and captain currently don't exist there, and the promotion policy was put in place to uh, guide that process of. Establishing those positions and then filling them either from within or outside. Okay. Good. Anything else? No, nope. oh. town administrator updates. Da -da -da -da. Pete. Thank you. Uh, a few items. Uh, the first is an update from Frontier Regional Union 38 school districts. Uh, because of the final Chapter 70 numbers that were released and uh, approved for the FY25 state budget, it actually did provide for an increase in per pupil funding, which means that there is a reduction in Waitley's FY25 assessment of $4,054. So there is a reduction on our cost thanks to state additional funds going to a preferred pupil funding. Uh, highway Department just lost Keith, but the F550 truck, the dump plow truck that uh, was the new purchase last year, will be de uh, delivered to the town within a month. Um, it's finalizing its fabrication uh, with the additional requested components that were part of the project. Job openings. We have posted, uh, based on your approval last meeting, that operator laborer position in anticipation of Dylan being promoted, which happened this evening. We actually have received nearly 20 applications already. Wow. Uh, it's great the wow. amount of applicants, and they're all within the area. Um, and so uh, Keith and myself and probably Fred will begin review on those applications August 21st or shortly thereafter, um, so next week. And then um, as part of the shared multi-town conservation agent agreement that the board approved last meeting as well, that job posting has been posted by Ashfield. Ashfield is the lead community handling the uh, securing of that conservation agent. So they did post that position. I've shared it. I know the other town administrators have shared it. Uh, I don't have an update yet as to how many applicants or when they will start their process, but um, the word is out. Okay. The mass DOT repaving of five and 10, that will begin in Hatfield next week. Originally, we were of the understanding that the repayment would start north and head south. It's actually starting from the Northampton town through Hatfield and then we'll come into Wheatley. So it's the inverse. Uh, so the one note though, is that the contractor that's handling this project will be using the DeMeo lot um, for the highway superintendent communication and oversight to store new catch basin frames that are going to have to be replaced as part of this project. So they're just using it as a storage uh, loading site during the project as part of the, the the benefits of the town, though, we will be given some millings from this process of the milling of the roadway. So we'll get additional material that uh, Keith won't have to worry about procuring. <laughs> um, so we are getting some benefit out of it. No, it will only be storage of the catch basins. No fill material or anything else are going under the mail. And then 
There is the mass DOT uh, vehicular. Oh, wow. I just lost what the VRU stands for. Essentially, it's a uh, systemic uh, safety project in order to multi-year project in order to reduce the um, uh, safety limitations for non-vehicular users on state roads, so pedestrians, bicyclists, whatnot. Uh, this is a multi-year project. This first year project right now is looking at uh, doing uh, immediate low-hanging fruits improvements at bus stops or installing bus stops on state roads in District 1, 2, and 3. Um, so for Wheatley, this includes three, uh, four bus stops along state road. Um, at the 9 to 13 state road, there will be new sidewalk, curbing, pedestrian curb ramps, detectable pads, crosswalk, and signage. At Tom's Long Hot Dogs, there will be a new sidewalk, curbing, pedestrian curb ramps, and signage. Muffins General Market, new sidewalk, curbing, pedestrian curb ramps, and signage. And then Club Castaways, new sidewalk, curbing, pedestrian club, uh, curb ramps, detectable pads, uh, crosswalk, and signage. Um, all of these improvements, just a, a note, um, this is not the limit to the work. It's just what's happening in this first year. Mm -hmm. And it was explicitly projects that didn't require them to do additional acquisition of easements or land because the right-of-way was impeded where the pavement was right at the boundary line. So this was things that the state looked at that they knew they had full land rights to. They had all of the ownership. They could do immediate improvements. But... Um, I would suggest that if the board has requests for recommendations, um, Joyce had made a good point about this improvement has a bus stop. What's the top block? Oh, yeah, there's like, muffins, right? yeah, there's one like going northbound. Yes. You can get off at Muffins or Club Castaways. Going southbound, you can get off at Club Castaways, um, Tom's Long Dogs, or State Road. But like, you uh, can't like. Get off, like if you're living at that motel, which I guess right now nobody's living there because of the fire, but it seems like you ought to have a stop on both sides of the road and maybe they'll stop there and it'll just not be, not having a sidewalk. And maybe I'm not yeah. understanding that, but it seems like these are defining the places where the bus will stop. And Or it could be where, similar to that, they need to acquire some additional right it looked kind of close yeah. yeah it looked kind of close on the map but yeah. they might not be able to fit a sidewalk in there easily and I, I have a feeling the same thing that they're not going to put a crosswalk there until they have a sidewalk there as well because you don't want the crosswalk to nowhere right through the bushes yeah right and but, most of these are little actually little sidewalks to nowhere too they but are they're improvements time. Just at that property, yeah. <laughs> right, right, and and I don't know how many years it'll be before there's like sidewalks where you could like walk from Muffins down to Galantis or up to Tom's, and that might be. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't hold my breath. Yeah, not holding, not <laughs> not holding my breath either. But uh, yeah. Out of curiosity, what is a detectable pad? Uh, so it's those pla not plastic, but they're essentially plastic pads uh, with the little nubs on them, mm -hmm. and they're there for the visually impaired, so that when they feel or they're okay. they're uh, they're with their shoes or their stick, their yeah. stick detects the pad that tells them that they're at a transition from the concrete sidewalk to the asphalt. It's a way for them to detect that they're about to do a transition. Cool. Learn something new. And all of them, I think I missed one of them, but Muffins does. Muffins and um, Tom so Long Dogs do include the detectable yeah. pads. I missed those two right. points. Maybe but... some sidewalks along there will be the next complete streets application. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope we'll get down to Wakely Center Woods before we do that. Well, yeah. but, okay, the one after that. <laughs> Uh, one more thing on that, the municipal, the MVP grant. Oh, yeah, sorry, there's one, that one additional one. So, uh, Sylvia and I attended the governor's announcement last week at Lemonster City Hall for the next round of the MVP grants, which is the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program grant. Uh, this grant round was their largest one, $52.4 million uh, in funding to towns, regional agencies, and tribal groups. 
uh, but it's the largest one in its history. Waitley has been awarded $82,000 towards its project, The Future Looks Like Waitley, Planting Resilience Through Nature-Based Solutions. This project will look at uh, doing projects on municipal property that uh, essentially are doing programs of like pollinator gardens in order to help create self catchment areas for water, but also to support the natural environment and the farm department as well. Um, so we, and we already have the, um, the, con, the, the service provider selected that was working with us on the, the grants. Um, there'll be a, a landscape. Sylvie, help me out here, sorry. Landscape interactions. <laughs> oh, okay. Terrific. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. Such a great, yeah. Yep. Bravo. Uh, lastly, items, or semi-lastly, items not anticipated. Anything? The discussion. Uh, next meeting is Tuesday, August 27th, 2024. It will include a public hearing for for Verizon utility poles on women. Yes, yes. So we've got to bring our game face here, okay? <laughs> you can bring our game face. And, and did you have a the name of a contact at Verizon? I do. You can, I found one. You, 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 you can get them have them have whoever comes to this here provides a list of what they think are double poles, not yet. And status. And, yeah. Right. Yeah. So that we don't have to wait. For them to, yeah. to go back to their, so we don't have to reject them. And then right. have them. I have. I actually realized I have one item not anticipated. A citizen oh. asked me about the display of the Zoom meeting. Um, they would love to see the board big. Oh, and we should pin that board. one. Yeah. So um, I can show you how to do it. Oh, yeah, you can pin the yeah. screen. That'd oh, be great. Yes. I, yeah, yes, they said, for instance, sometimes there's a big uh, black icon and, and, and nobody yes. else. There, there we go. go. Okay. So if you pin that, then it'll it, always even be if you yeah, always be that one, and then you can always unpin it, and mm -hmm. like when Sylvie's talking, we'll want to see Sylvie's face a bit. Yeah. Or if yeah. somebody yeah. remotely is doing a presentation, exactly. that we have to unpin it. Uh, yeah, they'll do, they're doing a screen share. Yeah, screen share. Do a little bit Fantastic. Of... This is great. Thank you very much. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Do I move that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned. We need to sign something.